Hi, everyone. It's Davina Frederick. Welcome back to Wealthy Woman Lawyer. I'm so glad that you are here. And today I want to talk about the seven struggles of women law firm owners. This topic came about because I've had so many conversations with you, uh, a lot of you lately. And obviously I've had conversations with hundreds of women law firm owners over the last 10 years as I've been coaching women law firm owners to scale their businesses to and through a million dollars. And um, lately, so many people are worried about inflation and the recession, and they're really stuck in negative thinking around their law firm business. So I wanted to help you get clear on exactly what it is that you may be struggling with, uh, because I think sometimes there's not a lot of clarity. We can't really dial into what it is that we're doing wrong uh, when we can't grow our law firm business, it feels like we're stuck. And so I want to share with you some of the things and I want you to, to raise your hand to yourself silently, make a checklist or whatever. If there is something on this list that jumps out at you and you go, oh yes, that I do that or oh, I have that fear. Um, so I really want to help you get clarity on what you're struggling with because um, the things that I'm going to share with you are things that we help women law firm owners with in the Wealthy Women Lawyer League and in our one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. Uh, so let's jump in and get started. S key struggle number one is that many law firm owners that I, uh, with whom I have conversations do not have a basic understanding of where they're starting and based on where they're starting, how long it will take them to get where they want to go. Um, so let's say you're, you, you know, I had a conversation yesterday with someone and I asked her what her gross annual revenue was and she could not tell me. She had to check with her bookkeeper. And that right there told me that she does not know her numbers. She doesn't know where she's starting in her business. So if you don't know where you're starting, if you're trying to drive from, you know, Orlando, Florida, where I am to Denver, Colorado, and you don't know where you're starting. You don't know you're starting in Orlando or Sanford or Lake Mary or maybe Miami or wherever it is, right? You, then you can't accurately calculate a roadmap to where you want to go. It's the same thing. If you're making a hundred thousand dollars in your business, but you're not really sure what stage of growth you're in, am I in stage one, stage two, or stage three? And what are the factors of each of those stages? then you're not gonna be able to clearly identify where you are and the kind of help you should ask for, right? So that is the first thing uh, that I see a lot of women law firm owners struggle with. They don't even know what they don't know. They don't know where they're starting. Uh, they don't have a realistic expectation for how long it takes to get to and through a million dollars based on their starting point. Um, and they don't know exactly what's needed to get there. So number two of the growth struggles that I hear women law firm owners uh, tell me about is fear of math. So this goes a lot in hand in hand with what I said, number one, fear of math, but it's beyond fear of math. It's so, you know, we're all, we all know that it's the joke among lawyers is that I hate math, which is why I became a lawyer, right? But if you decided to open your own law firm business, you've heard me say this over and over again, you've got to get over that fear of math. You have to understand business math, right? And you can't let embarrassment about what you don't know stop you from seeking out that knowledge and understanding and trying to understand what you need to know, such as the key performance indicators you need to be tracking in your business, how to track them, um, and how to read your financial reports, what that information means, what it means um, when we're talking about gross annual revenue, what it means when we're talking about profit, what it means when we're talking about uh, cash flow, right? Uh, so many women law firm owners, they could tell you their expenses, but they're focused on that negative. They're focused on that expense and they can't tell you how they make their money. Where does this money come from? Oh, referrals. Well, what referrals? Who? Right. So there's a lot of tracking and fear of math and fear of metrics and fear of understanding um, how to how to actually measure your growth. Right. Number three is still trying to do all the things. This is just so common among high achieving women. And even those women who are say that they're delegating often really are not delegating as much as they should be delegating because they don't know the proper way to delegate. So they struggle with delegating. They'll say, I have a team, but I still don't delegate as much as I should. 
I still think it's faster and easier to do it myself. And it's because they don't have a system for delegating that helps them delegate in a way that is easy for them, right? Uh, number four of the seven growth strategies is not prioritizing your time. So you think you have a time management problem and you, you do not have a time management problem. What you have is a priorities problem. You still have too much on your plate because you haven't gotten your priorities straight. You don't know what's the most important thing you should be doing in your business. You think it's servicing the clients, but that may not be the case. There's, if you are a business owner, there are other things that are equally important or maybe even more important than that, right? So you think you have a time management issue, but really you don't understand how to prioritize your time. Number five is not willing to invest financially, energetically, emotionally in your business to the degree that is required, right? So what, what business owners don't understand, what law firm owners don't understand until maybe they've been in business for a while is that you have to take risks. You have to take calculated risks to, if you want to get the returns. Any investment you make, let's say you invest in the stock market, the average 50-year uh, rate of return in the stock market is 10%, right? There's a certain amount of risk. The more you risk, the more opportunity for higher returns. And people understand that, but they don't understand that in business, it's the same thing. Your business is an investment in your future. You must take risk for that to get good returns for you. You can't play small. When you play small, you're not taking any risk. You're not going to get the kind of wealth that you say you desire. So you have to take risk. That risk could involve investing in hiring a coach to help you. The, the, the people who grow fastest and most successfully have invested in coach. And the reason they do that is because they, they don't need to make the same mistakes. They don't want to make the same mistakes that other people who've already been there and done that have made. So they hire people to help them create a shortcut. So again, going back to kind of talking about getting from point A to point B, if, if from point A to point B, your plan is to get in the car and drive from Orlando to Denver. And I say, you know, hey, you don't need to do that. You can get an airplane ticket and you can be there a lot faster. And you might not know that. You might think, well, I have to drive because I've been told to, to you know, I have a roadmap, right? So, um, but really what the purpose of a coach is to help you with those shortcut secrets, those things that you don't know. If you're going to drive, uh, that coach might tell you, you know, if you take this route and this route and this route, you're going to cut two hours off of your trip. That's what you're, that's what coaching will do for you is to help you uh, realize that there, that you don't have to make the mis same mistakes other people made. And also to get out of your own head because we are our own worst enemy to our progress. Self, our self doubt is the thing that is holding us back above anything else and doing more harm. And a, and a good coach will help you get out of your own head and, and stop doubting yourself enough that you can actually step out and take some action instead of being paralyzed by analysis paralysis. Okay, um, not, not making the, you're making the wrong decisions. Number six is making the wrong decisions because you don't have the right plan. So you're making the wrong decisions. You're, you're on the road, you're on a path, but you don't have the right roadmap. You don't have the right plan. You don't know what it takes to get from A to B. And instead of asking, instead of hiring someone to help you figure that out, you're sitting there trying to figure it out on your own. And then you're caught in this web of confusion because you don't, you're afraid to make a mistake, right? So you to get a plan that is the right plan for you, you need to work with somebody to help you figure that out if that is the thing that is keeping you stuck, okay? And also learning to make your plan the right plan. Once you have made decisions, learning how to make decisions quickly and move forward and make your plan the right plan, no matter what, is a, is a real key factor in successful entrepreneurship and building a business. And number seven, last on my list for today, uh, growth struggles of women law firm owners, is you're still taking advice from well-meaning loved ones who are broke too. You're taking advice from people who are where you are now, not where you want to go. So you're surrounding yourself with those people who are broke and they're, they're telling you, don't do this, do this, because they are placing their fears in your head and you are locking out access to people who are where you want to go or are further ahead in the journey than where you are. 
because you you are scared of reaching out and forming those relationships and making those investments. And so you listen to people who are not where you want to go, but who may want to go where you want to go, but they're not there yet and they don't know what they're doing. And they're well, they're usually well-meaning loved ones. They're usually family, uh, close friends that have that are scared for you. And so, you know, they they tell you to be cautious at times when you probably should be taking a risk and and making something happen, right? So those are the seven uh, growth struggles of women law firm owners. These are the kinds of things that I hear all the time from women law firm owners who are struggling to grow their law firm business and really holding back and playing small for year after year after year after year, instead of stepping forward, uh, stepping out on faith, taking risks, investing in their business, surrounding themselves with people who are, are where they want to go or um, are ahead of them in the journey and um, just not taking, not, not investing in learning how to fill that knowledge gap, right? So I hope that this, you have found this helpful. I hope that you un, uh, had a chance to sit and think about this and write down kind of where you think you may be stuck. If you want to reach out to me and have a conversation about whether or not you think a wealthy woman lawyer uh, is somebody who can help you, we can have a call. You can hop on a call with me. If you go to wealthywomanlawyer.com to private coaching, you can hit the apply button or you can go to wealthywomanlawyer.league and you can see what it's like to enroll in our group coaching program. Uh, but schedule an appointment with me reach out to me, check out our resources. We have a lot of resources available, no matter where you are in your growth journey. If you're at stage one, stage two, or stage three, on your way to a million dollars, um, we have a, a, a lot of resources for you. So I encourage you to re reach out if this is your struggle. If 2022 has not lived up to your expectations and you want 2023 to be better, um, then you can do it. I wanna tell you that you can do it. You have to get out of your own way though. All right. So this has been another episode of the Wealthy Woman Lawyer podcast. I appreciate you being here. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave us a review on your um, podcast app. If you are an Apple fan girl like me, you can go leave it there. Um, and we so appreciate it. The more reviews we have tells those algorithms that, that you're enjoying this content and it introduces it to other people. So we so appreciate that. Thank you for being here and being a part of the Wealthy Woman Lawyer community.